the Puppet tool allows you to take an object and add anchor points to it and basically do a warp to bend the pixels. So let me show you what I mean. Here's this photo of a statue that I took. This is a photo. I went into Photoshop and within Photoshop I cut out the two hands to separate layers. And when I cut out the right hand I had to then use the clone tool to fill in the missing parts where the photos overlapped. Does that make sense to most folks here? Okay. And then I got a little smarky here and I actually added a light so that this hand is casting a shadow on this hand. I moved them apart in 3D space and then scaled this front one down so it looked like its original size, but it's actually in front of the other hand. So when the light hits this hand, this hand is casting a shadow on this hand. We'll do a basic version of this in a second. Now, I'll show you the end result, then I'll show you what we did. I'm bending these together. I also did a little bit of anchor point rotation, but I brought the hands together, and I didn't just rotate them like this. The fingers are actually closing. Look at the thumb and the forefinger. All right, some of you think, so what? When I see things like this, I think this is really cool, and it opens up new ideas of things I can do. So if I select one of these hands here, you'll see, let's twirl this down and click on the effects options. There's the puppet. Look at the control points. I added some control points at the fingertips here and where there was natural joints, the wrist, the joint of the thumb, the tip of the thumb, the end of the finger, near the bend part here in the hand. And it creates a mesh that you can use and it sort of auto detects a mesh around the object and then you can bend it. So if we go back to the original hand here and you select it, what happens is, is you click the puppet tool and you add a pin to tell it where this is happening. And you have to give it a second the first time through because it thinks. And then you click here and you can add your control points. Then we can grab those and move them. And if you want to freeze things, underneath here you actually have a overlap tool. So I could come down here and say, you know, overlap is where they intersect. So overlap allows you to define which object is in front and back if you need to. That's a little tricky. But you have the starch tool, which allows you to say, oh, this area down here shouldn't be bending and you could sort of lock this in place so it doesn't move as these other points do. And you're saying, well, you know, how does that work? Well, okay, I got a bird here. And I did a little Photoshop work. There's the background. There's the bird. And actually, the bird goes beyond the background here. What I did is I started with a higher resolution photo, and then in Photoshop, I cropped it to HD res. And then uh, there's the leaves in front. You can add the control pins for the bird. Puppet pin. Let's put one at the neck. And uh, one here and a little bit down here at the feather area, sort of. And if you want to sort of control this, you can just hold down the command key and you get a little stopwatch. So now when you drag, it's like motion sketch. And it'll actually record it over time. And all of those recordings are done in real time. So you can just sort of control it. Now the key is, is have a lot of RAM and drop the quality of the window here to like half or quarter. But you could do that and control it. Now obviously I went a little too far there. That'd be a dead bird if it bent that much. But isn't that cool when you don't have to sit there and like keyframe all the time? You just sort of do it. Hey, how's it going? I'm a bird. Um, and so here's what I came up with. And on this one... When I imported this, I told it when it came in, there we go. Let's go ahead and do this here at quarter resolution. Oh, by the way, when I added these control pins here, thank you, I also uh, went under the window and called up the smoother. And then after the fact, selected all of those things and smoothed it out by clicking on the smoother to reduce how many keyframes were in there so it wasn't as jerky. 
the smoother analyzes the keyframes and sort of evens out the value and says, oh, this is too jittery here. What you wanted was a movement that went left, right, left, right. But what you had was left, 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 right, 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 oh, left, right. And it just smooths it out so it's a smoother move between control points. And this is what I did, you know, a little bit more gentle here with the animation. And I did a few things here too, like you see the branch is actually blowing a little bit. So as the bird moves, the branch reacts a little to the bird's movement. So it is yet another way that we could take stills and turn it into motion content. Kind of cool, right? And I even had the feet move because I put a control point down there on the foot. So it's one of those tools that has some real ramifications especially for people who are doing low budget web animation and who are trying to do like what they used to do in flash for some of those styles of animation if you can get your photos properly masked you could do some pretty cool things